Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Here we are again, boldly going where no one has gone before. I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Discovery. This is a show I was excited about when I saw the previews for it. I had some shortcomings, basically. There were things, there were elements I don't like about the new Star Trek. I'll even go into the movies a little bit because I think one of the writers is part of this, Kurtzman. First off, I'll say the actress, Sonequa Martin Green. I know her a little bit from The Walking Dead, and she's okay in that. She's amazing, and she should get every award TV gives. I won't give plots, major reveals. I generally give impressions of the elements, what I like and didn't like, but not too detailed. But this woman is amazing. She plays a human raised by Vulcans and the growth that entails. I'll be talking about seasons one and two. Putting that aside, lots of good shows, great shows. Some people think are great anyway, have some great actors in it. This one does. It does a good blend of things, but it's not my Star Trek. And tying into the movies, there are aspects of the movies I like too. The, just called the J.J. Abrams movies. Christopher Pine. Uh, I love McCoy. Carl Urban is amazing in that. But the elements for me aren't Star Trek enough. I think the movies might even do it better than Discovery. And I'm also going to do a podcast on Star Trek Picard. So the visuals are the first thing I'll go into. They're so good, but not for me. And I'll explain that by saying uh, the original Star Trek had these phases. And the handheld ones, they shot real slow. It was a beam that was sustained. And people would glow, get stunned, or get evaporated, so on and so forth. And certain other races had more deadly weapons that would annihilate you and shoot more of a pulse blast. In the development of Star Trek going from the TV shows to the movies, they did up that game a little bit and they started combining it. Meaning by the time you got to the next generation movies, you had the more pulse-like phases from Star Trek, but they would find excuses to use the sustained phaser effect. So you still might have people using the phases, which they upped the speed and they made it look better. But they would use pulse rifles. And once in a while, they would use just the same phaser on the pulse rifle to seal a door. So on and so forth. That element carried over to the ship weapons. Now, all the movies prior to the J.J. Abrams, I'm okay with. One of my favorite ships ever is the Defiant from the... Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It has pulse phases and a regular phaser or the traditional phases. And it works great. War vessel, just amazingly done. So all the movies up before J.J. Abrams blended these effects. They upped the game, so to speak. But it was still Star Trek to me. J.J. Abrams stopped that with what you want to call the pew-pew. It's more of a Star Wars feel constant barrage of different color lasers and that type of effect and look it might be good for people it might be something that people enjoy but it hasn't gotten to me it doesn't tickle my fancy it's not star trek so that's not a real critique in the way uh i can understand you know technology getting better you want to do put a different spin on it fine it just won't be for me i still like the traditional Star Trek phases, the effects. Now, what I do give credit for and don't mind is the hand weapons. So although the hand weapons, the movies started incorporating with pulse phases and the pew pew, so to speak, it's okay with me. That seems okay. It's the ships more 
that I want to differentiate in the in that category. But other than that, Star Trek Discovery has great ship renders, the battles. I mean, like everything is done well, except I don't like what they did with the Klingons. So they all sound like they're in masks. And maybe that's an element that they thought would add to the characters. In any case, it's a major part of season one, and I wasn't too happy with it. But the first couple of episodes really got me into it. Like I said, Sonequa Martin-Green is fucking amazing. Can't give enough props. She plays Michael Burnham. And is a reveal of who she is and who raised her. Uh, this So the first couple of episodes got me. And then the ship starts doing things that is not a normal traditional starship. And that I didn't like. They went into a plot, which was a major one. Which had to do with how they travel. And it's just didn't get me. It didn't catch me like Star Trek would. Now, I hesitated on Star Trek Enterprise, which only lasted four seasons. And I, I loved it. But the opening song didn't hit me. And it took me a while to get through it and enjoy it. So I kept plodding along. It's a problem with Star Trek Discovery is on a paid channel. I think that's a big mistake, especially for Star Trek. But okay, I'll wait till they come out, watch them in bulks anyway. So I get through season one. There were some cool twists, some some elements that are really nice and played out well. The acting is great. I mean, uh, across the board, there's really elements that really work. There's a couple that don't, but it doesn't outweigh the... Uh, you know, scales of balance in, in, in a real important way for me. But the element of Star Trek doesn't seem to call out to me. It doesn't hark into my youth and remembering the originals on TV. Not that I was old enough. I'm born in 71. But the reruns. Remember when Next Generation came out. All the other shows, the movies. And I enjoy every one. Some more than others. So this kind of feels... A little jarring in that sense, uh, but not, not something that I wouldn't expect that people were going to like. If you're going to like a certain element, it might be just how things naturally change. Uh, the difference between Battlestar Galactica, the original, and the new one. It's almost like they went backwards in technology. I, I loved it. It blew me away. But this, I don't know, it's just an element that I'm not too keen on they did some tropes of star trek very well um i'm gonna be a major characters that have certain things go on you bring back the other tropes of star trek and you kind of go okay i know what's going on here and it makes sense and it's they do it pretty well there's also the problem i see a lot with casting somebody for a role and then asking them to do things they can't do so I've mentioned this in podcasts like uh, Punisher, the villain. He worked for me as a friend, possibly even a military guy. But when he became the villain of the show, it didn't work for me. Uh, recently, he was another one I talked about. In general, you get an actor to play the, I guess, love interest for the main character. And it works for me in that sense. And the reveals that go on just don't work for me what what's supposed to happen what he's supposed to be just didn't pan out for me and then i'm going to get to season two now where it falls flat and just it just doesn't make sense to me it doesn't work well i'm not i'm sorry i don't like to i haven't named the actor but it's just it doesn't work he doesn't fit that role he's now supposed to play season two you know, just pointed out so many things to me about Star Trek where, you know, the core of Star Trek was there. And the show has tried to make unique spins on it and keep that heart there. I don't think Star Trek Discovery cares. And for that fact, Picard, or Star Trek Picard, which I'll do another podcast on. And that might be a good thing, Maybe you know. Look what happened with George Lucas trying to bring back his uh, version of Star Wars. And 
I could find elements I like in the prequels, but they're not up to par. And the best I could say, it's his vision. He did it. And it's out there. That's it. So this could be something I could see a lot of people liking. But seasons two, mystery was a little bit better for me. Trying to figure things out. Stay one head of the game. Kind of worked. They didn't go too much into the special way the ship moves around space. But they, when they did hit on it, I was always rolling my eyes. I hate the effect of the ship when it does it. It looks corny and out of place. Just stick to the normal warp drive, the improved warp bubbles and trans warp coil, whatever the fuck. You ought to come up with this uh, spore-like thing that, for me, just watered down season one. Although they thought it was a major plot reveal. And then the elements of season one that are heartfelt to some extent, you, you just... You screw up in season two. So th- there's that element. So where, although I liked the mystery of it, I was getting into the, you know, how do we get ahead of this puzzle? How do we figure things out and then blend in the weekly episodes? Okay, they didn't do that good of a job, but it was well enough. There's an element they bring back. And when you try to fix something or you, know, you kill a character or if you bring them back type thing, you got to do it good or at least stick to the Star Trek trope. This was just whatever. Uh, So, as a whole, I'm not happy with Star Trek Discovery. Could I see elements that people are going to enjoy? Yes. Uh, There's such good performances. It looks visually amazing. Except for the preferences that I like. And I understand what they are. Um, I'm hearkening back to, you know, you point the phaser at somebody and their beam shoots out slowly. And like I explained, they, they did up that game and make it better. And But the movies still blended them. The older movies. pre Next generation movies are the last ones. I think that did it well. And the J.J. Abrams style, which looks amazing, is just not for me. I'm not going to rip on the style of their episodes. I think they did it okay. If you want to talk about like editing and do you want... Star Trek episodes that are wrapped up in one episode. Yes. Is it intriguing to have these arcs like you're watching movies? Yes. So I see the element of wanting that episode that's just confined and restricted and it's done. And they try to keep something in the background. So they try. But it's a little heavy handed at points. But... I don't know. I think her the performances are what really tries to even make me sit on the fence with this show. It's not my Star Trek. It is what it is. Can I enjoy it for what it is? Yeah. Um, there are enough elements they pull in that keep me grounded. Uh, and like I said, the performance just hammer that in. I could see fans... Of the of old Star Trek, not happy with it. I would totally understand. Um, I'll get into my disappointment in Picard, but it's a little worse with that. This one, I think, tried at least, um, you know, to keep the tropes and then go for it in season two with a mystery and bring in elements of the show because it's set ten years before Kirk Enterprise, the original series. So you can imagine the elements they can play with, like Spock and Captain Pike, things like that. So, I don't know if this helps. Like I said, I don't like to give much away. But it is something I caught up on during these times and finally got my thoughts together on the things that bothered me and the things that I like. All in all, I don't think it's going to stop me if another season comes out, because it did two seasons, to stop me from watching it. But I would say it doesn't get pushed up on the list. It doesn't super excite me. So take a chance on Star Trek Discovery. Uh, if you don't like the old Star Trek, it might be for you. If you like the old Star Trek, give it a time. It's It tries. It just might not be 
you know, good enough for some people. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll see everybody next time. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.